I'm Sean Lockyer of Sean Lockyer Architects. We're sitting at a house called Dilkera, which is a really special house for us, some seven years in the making. And it's a house that really embodies the best of what we think our design is about, and something that really responds to the subtropics. To properly understand this house, you really need to understand the area that we're in, which is Brisbane and ultimately Southeast Queensland, and that the form of this building is very much an expression about how we deal with an environment where we have a lot of rain, we have a great deal of heat and a lot of humidity. So this house is about those deep thresholds, those sort of lovely wide eaves, those protected edges, so that year round there's a sense of being able to live in the house and on the land and not feel like you're constantly mediating between getting inside and outside. While it's an inner city site, it enjoys this incredible amenity, both in terms of the borrowed landscape on the eastern side of the block across the street from the house, where you get these lovely sort of bush views instead of looking into a neighbour. And then on the western side, you've got this incredible mix of this beautiful expanse of the river looking across to New Farm Park, the powerhouse. And then to the southwest, you get these views of the city. The arrival sequence of this house has got a deliberate modernist theme to it where there's a sort of incremental revealing of the house and what lies beyond it. So when one comes in the entry, there's almost this containment of space where you come up to the front door, which is relatively solid. The edges of the building pull back. You start to get these little vignettes and these views through into the landscape, through to the river, and you connect with a beautiful dragon tree and water feature. And you start to get this lovely sense of the transparency that this house is all about. As one moves into the space, there's a sense of it opening up both in the plan and in the section as we come into the space that I'm sitting now where there's this lovely double height space that really sort of becomes the center of gravity in terms of the form and the architecture of the house. And it kind of orientates all the other spaces. Mark and Tracy have some beautiful art in the house. There's some amazing works by David Rankin. There's a beautiful work by Minnie Pearl, a very famous Aboriginal artist. We do want the house to be a canvas for the life and the personality and the expression of life within the house. When it comes to material choice for us, less is well and truly more. I think the older I get as an architect, I think the more perspective I have and the more sense of clarity I have about the more timeless and the more restrained and the more quiet architecture can be, the better. So overwhelmingly, the building is all formed concrete. The base of the house is clad with some beautiful stone and pretty much everything else in the house is timber, either the black timber, which adorns all the windows and those lovely sort of deep edges. And then the filigree is all the blonde timber, which just silvers off. So the house itself is very, very muted in color. The floor finishes from inside to outside are all consistent, so there's this lovely seamlessness between um, those indoor-outdoor spaces. The concrete flows through and then transitioning into this beautiful oak cabinetry. It's on stairs and all the balustrading, and then it extends through into the furniture. In the architecture of this house, there are a number of different ways that we've treated the edges, and those are often quite uh, deliberately characterized by how we control light, privacy, security even. And really, what form that takes is a whole series of screens and edges, and we often refer to them as filigree. So on the eastern facade of the house that faces the street and the garden, the screens are static, and they've got a mixture of scale. They sort of open up to allow the landscaping to cascade through. They close down to deal with privacy and containment. And on the first floor level, where the function of the rooms are different again, we've got an operable screen in aluminium that drops down, it can move away completely, it can um, articulate itself, that you can really control and curate the light. It does sit out it's quite distinctly different from what's around it, but that's a deliberate attempt for it to actually really engage in the landscape rather than be a dialogue about building itself. But Kash and Tristan from Green Care did an amazing job, and thankfully Mark and Tracy were really excited and recognised the importance of getting them involved. One of the things that really characterised the landscape design here, the use of all the xanthereas, which are these beautiful grass trees which are dotted around the garden, some of them over 200 years of age. And there's some other really beautiful details that we developed for the first time in this project. And one of those is where we've actually grounded some planters into the top of the wall and then clad them with stone. So the landscaping actually looks like it's cascading out of the wall itself. 
ultimately the most important thing for us in every project is the relationship with the client and I really have to thank and extend you know, every gratitude to Mark and Tracy. It's that quality of relationship that we hope defines us in the work that we do as architects.